Hey everyone, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen, I'm back, and I'm gonna show you how to make Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. So don't forget, like and subscribe, because it really helps me out. And yes, she's spinning. Check it out, right? I totally up my game. So anyway, okay, here we go. You start out with kind of a cornflower blue color. I made this by mixing sky blue and gray together. Anyway, get yourself a lollipop stick. This one is about eight inches long. Make yourself a nice thin piece of blue, run it down the stick, and start rolling it in your hands and make it skinny. We're going to make her torso and her neck all in one piece. So as you can see, the top is gonna to be even skinnier and her body itself is pretty darn thin, even you know with all the squeezing and everything I'm doing, she probably could be thinner still. Anyway, mm -hmm. make the neck nice and long. You can't have it too long. If it does look too long, we'll just trim it off later, so don't worry about that. Give her a very gentle hourglass shape. She does have a little bit of a bust to her. And um, try to bring it out a little bit, but don't worry if she's more streamlined. You're not gonna notice a difference, really, once we add all the patchwork to her. In order to make the neck super duper thin, um, I pinched it off in the back and then I used the knife to trim it. So you can see I'm kind of pulling it into the back there. And then I'll use the knife and just trim it off. So eventually smooth it, trim it, smooth and trim, until it ends up like you saw there. All right, stick it in your styrofoam. That's what I use. I use styrofoam to hold my pieces that are upright like that. Okay, these are going to be her legs. I took a, eh, not too long, but a long enough piece. Roll it out skinnier tapering on each end and leave the middle kind of fat. And those are going to become her legs. You trim off the bottom of them because we're going to add shoes later, so we don't need that. And there she has her hips, her thighs, and her calves. Um, when you bend them at the knee, I'm bending her so she's kind of sitting with her legs sticking out to the side, not quite the crisscross applesauce, but you want to pinch the knees off a little bit like I did so they're not rounded, they are a little bit more sharp. And I'm just going to ask everyone to ignore my blue fingers because I mixed all the colors right before I made the video. And for some reason the colors stick to me, even though I did wash my hands, but anyway, that's my life right there. Yeah, anyway. Trim off the, the butt of her because we don't need her to be too too rumpy because, again, she is pretty streamlined. And a little bit of water, pinch it all together, and I'm going to lift it up, place it down, and then run the stick right through it so the top of her torso will come down and sit on the legs. Now, if I would just move my lovely hand there, and you can see what I'm actually talking about. There you go. And you see the legs kind of go off to the side. I make her sitting because when I mail these things... Um, if, she, if their legs are, and arms are more compact to the body and not sticking out real far, there's less chance of breakage. If you're doing it for your own cake and you guys are just beast mode enough, go ahead and make her standing. That's good for you <laughs> if you can do that. All right. Once you get the torso and the legs, we're going to start building her dress. She is nothing but patchwork, so you're going to be mixing colors. This color is a very light pink that I mixed with brown. It's going to become the one side, the left side of her dress. She's got three main sections of her dress that we're gonna, I'm gonna show you here. And the, this is where it really kind of matters. All the colors in, in her outfit and everything are very muted. So I wanna say, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, every single color I used on her dress, I ended up mixing with some amount of brown. So this is pretty heavily brown. Chop off the edge like I did there. You, you can see it's kind of rhombusy shaped. I'm using a brown edible food coloring marker and I'm drawing the pattern of the piece of cloth, the scrap here, in with it. Um, this one is just a checkerboarded with brown stripes, kind of a, I don't know, scrap of a school uniform or something like that. A little bit of water, brush, brush, brush. And then press it into place. It should come to about the middle of her waist and around her back. And you can see how it kind of flows out over the side onto the styrofoam a little bit and onto her legs. I'm using this tool to press down the scrap that I put on there and to form, it, to fit it to her form better so it looks actually like fabric, how it will settle down into, you know, the creases around your body, the, the folds will go down into the divot between her legs and that kind of thing. Just makes the flow of the dress look nicer. So that's what I'm doing there, and that's what I'm showing you here. I go across the legs, across between the legs, around the knees, la la la. All right, this is another little scrap of the dress. It kind of goes in the middle. This, again, is a darker pink mixed with less brown. And 
it's just a thin stripe that goes in the middle. So try to get your scrap dresses, dress scraps, pretty thin, but not too thin. They have to be strong enough that when it sticks out away from her body, it's not gonna break. And again, I'm roughing up the edge because you know she doesn't have nice clean cuts on her dress. She is a rag doll after all. So once you get your nice little scrappy edges put in there, gonna line it up to see how everything measures. It's gonna go up to the same height as that beigey pinky color that we've got there. So you're gonna end up trimming it off. I do a lot of just putting it up against her, taking it off and trimming. Only when I'm happy with it do you add the water and stick it on. You really can't mess her up though with the proportions of this too badly, just cause she is a Tim Burton and there's no symmetry or anything and it, she's a rag doll, it's all scraps. You can see I kind of cut a curve out there to try to fit the form a little better and of course it worked because uh, yeah, I did it. Anyway, we are using the same color beige pink again that we did for the first plaid part on the other side of the dress. Roll it out long, this is gonna go onto the other side. Like I said, three main sections for her dress part. So cut it out, line it up, cut it out, line it up. You can make it go out as far as you want. You know, you don't want it to stick out too far because you risk breaking. But if it's too short, then it looks like, you know, someone took a big chunk out of the side of her dress. If she were to stand up, it would be quite scandalous on that side. So anyway, find the length you like, trim it out just like that. Get rid of the other pieces. That still works. And you can see it kind of wraps around into the back too. You don't really have to worry too much about filling in the back. If it bothers you, make those pieces longer, throw in a shade of green or you know whatever you want. Okay, so in order to make the pattern on this piece, all I'm doing is using my brown edible food coloring marker again and making dots just dot, 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 because uh, her dress in the movie on this side has a bunch of dots. And again, it's real random. There's no pattern or anything to it. It's just dotted up because fortunately, Tim Burton doesn't ever do symmetry. So anyway, all right. Now I'm using water to add it on. Again, you wait till you're ready before you go and do it. And I'm also making sure to add water to the edge of the other colors that you're matching up against with the, with the gum paste dress scraps. You're gonna want the dresses, the pieces to match up to each other as flat and smooth as you can because later on we're going to use a different color and start adding stitches to it. So it just makes your life easier if they match up as best as you can do. Alrighty, we are going with more of a solid brown color this time. It's just brown brown. And we're going to give her a little bit of a scrap around her waist there. It goes about halfway around. So literally like right down the center of her. I'm gonna trim it off and there's no pattern to add to this side. So yay, that one's a little easier. Okay, the same color brown, we're going to add two strips of fabric to the dress, or to the little darker pink part of her dress. She has a couple of patches of the brown fabric on top of the pink stripes. So that's what we're doing right here. Roll it out nice and thin, guys. Otherwise, you're gonna have you know very, very thick 3D patches on her. Okay, this color yellow, it looks pretty bright actually right here. But anyway, the yellow is just your typical yellow, again, mixed with brown to mute it out. So in real life, it's more of a mustard color. Maybe it looks that way to you. It's just my computer I'm working on here. But um, yeah, so this is gonna become her socks. She has the good old slouch socks from the 80s. So good on you, Sally. Way to bring back the retro look. A Little bit of water, stick it on over. We're gonna do a little cheaty style here, so we don't need to wrap it around. Just lay it across both, tuck under your two edges there. Gotta trim off the other edge, trim it, trim it, and it is trimmed. Okay. Yes, can't forget the water, make sure it sticks. And then just using, yes, press it down, okay. Using the knife blade, just put the little mark down the center so it looks like it's going between her feet or her legs. That it's two separate socks and she's not, you know, bound at her ankles with a big old yellow sweatband or something. This is my black food coloring marker and I'm putting the black stripes that she has on her socks. Now on the other half of that, I don't even know, belt, middle part of her dress is a light beige scrap. This is true light beige. There's no pink in it. It's literally brown and white. That's all I did and you just match it up to the other half of her dress. Now that same color light brown there is going to go on half of her chest and shoulder part of her dress. 
um, I just cut a wedge out like you see here and I start trimming. You're going to have the bottom flat, of course. And the way her dress goes, it goes the cut of the two pieces that make up the, the bustier part is going to go straight up the center and then hook off toward the shoulder. So it kind of, if she were to have cleavage, it would be showing a little bit. But this is where we're going to draw in some cleavage stitches, I guess. I don't know. I mean, you'll see in a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here, just trimming off the extra. And just so that we can have that up and over look for that one shoulder. So again, there's your water. And don't worry about the back too much. Just make sure it goes around enough that everything will be covered by the hair or covered by fabric, fabric, you know, gum paste fabric. So yes, careful precision when I'm placing it. It's so delicate. Not really. I'm just slow for some reason in this video. Because that wrinkle right there, that, that was bothering me. All right, so wrap it around, wrap it around, press it down in place. And everything is pretty tight to her body, so like I said, make sure you got it nice and nice and snug and pressed in there, trying to match the light beige to the brown beneath it. I'm kind of pressing it in because, again, you want, you're going to draw stitches on later. You want it to work. Back to that lovely mustardy yellow color. It was just yellow and brown, even though it looks pretty bright. Trust me on that one. And, yeah, the same idea. You're going to match it up to the other side. It's going to sit on top of the beige, and it's going to match up to the other half of the beige. So there's beige all around it. It's going to go up and over, so I'm just kind of matching it up, marking it out. And then trim, trim, trim. And again, just like last time, you know, put it on, measure it out, take it off, trim it out. Because this kind of thing, when you're just matching up patches, it's kind of hard to use a template or something like that. You just kind of wing it. And make sure all your colors do stay muted, because you don't want anything bright. She, The whole darn movie is pretty dull in color. So you don't want her to be like, ah, 80s all around, just her socks. Okay, there we go. Pressing it on. I've got some extra there. I'll end up trimming that off with my knife. See, how do I know I was going to do that? It's like a magic. And there you go. All right. Pretty good. And now we are going to add... Actually, we're not going to add. That was a trick. Now we're going to make an arm. I just jumped the gun here and didn't change it in the video because that's how I roll sometimes. <laughs> All right. You roll it out really thin. She has got some skinny, skinny, skinny limbs on this, this chick here. So roll it out nice and thin. And then on the skinny end, press it down with your finger, and that little bulge, you know, not a bulge, little flattened area is going to become her hand. I'm using my X-Acto knife. I cut a little triangle. The triangle goes straight down and then out to the side to make a thumb. And trim off the tip of the thumb because her fingers are not pointy, despite how long and lean she is. She doesn't have pointy tips. So we're going to cut fingers now. Going to cut three little slices to make four little fingers. And because I am just so stickler for details, we'll go with that. I'm trimming off the pinky, the ring finger, and the pointer finger in order to make them, you know, more proper length. So the pinky is the shortest and so on. Anyway, now I'm taking my brown edible food coloring marker. That should be just a phrase that everyone gets a nickel every time I say. And I am just drawing the swirly pattern that's on that patch of her clothing. I have tried to emulate it, and this is about as good as it gets. I don't know. It's just how it comes out. As long as it's swirly design. I mean, if you take a look at her pictures, you'll find it, and you can try to do better. But it's the effect, and it, it really does come out pretty good. So we'll just say that, yeah, that's good enough. And you attach her skinny little arm. Um, and when you... Do put it, I have her hands in her lap. Make sure you bend the elbow where an elbow should be. Don't just leave her arm curving like a noodle. So it just, she actually has joints in the movie. So let's try to represent them when you're doing this. And on a total side note, it bothers me immensely that Adventure Time, you know, the characters all have these noodly arms that flap in the wind and have no bones practically. And yet Finn can break his bones. So I don't know. Anyway. Making the other arm. Here we go. Back on track. Once again, cut out that little triangle on the side for the thumb. 
cut out the little wedges to make the rest of the fingers. The pointer finger was a little too thick. I didn't cut enough, so just trim some more. That's all you have to do. Trim a little off of that pointy finger. Trim some more off the pinky. Make sure the fingertips are a little rounded. If the pinky's a little fat, which I think it was there, trim a little more off. Trim, trim, trim. If it's no good, wad it up into a ball, roll it out, try again. That's the very forgiving nature of gum paste. You gotta love it. Okay, I already put a little water on there, which I didn't show because you guys know what water on a paintbrush looks like. And I'm just placing her hand in her lap because she's so demure. Gave her another elbow. And there we go. Now we can add the sleeves to her dress. This is the green that she has on the right shoulder. It's pretty much the only green I think she has. She might have some in the back, but again, we cover it with hair so it doesn't matter. Cut out your little rhombusy shape. It'd be funny if it was not a rhombus. I'm just saying the wrong word. But anyway, a little bit of water, wrap it around and press it into place. Make sure you press the sleeve all around onto the dress because it bothers me when people make a dress or sleeve like that and then it sticks out under the arm. It's like sleeves don't, you know, only connect at the shoulder and then flap like a drape. They do connect. Anyway, and also the green isn't tattered. I don't know why. I guess she found some green fabric at the store or something, but that one wasn't tattered. This is golden yellow again, the mustard yellow. That's our friend. Um, this is going to go on her other shoulder. This one is tattered, so take some little nips out of it with your knife or your blade or whatever you got. It's also striped, so I've got my brown marker. I'm not saying all the rest again. And I'm just drawing some lines on here. And that is it. A little bit of water, stick it on, press it on, smush it on. Whatever you got to do to make it stick on. Just don't lick it. That's gross. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just making sure that sleeve is tucked into her dress, like I said. Don't have any free-floating cape dresses. All right, this is going to be her head. I just took a ball. I'm sizing it up. Um, you want her ball, her, her ball, her head to be on the smaller side. She's got kind of a little tiny pea head versus her body. So don't make it too big. She's not your typical Disney where they got the giant melon running around. Okay, and it's also more oval-shaped, kind of, than perfectly circular. All right, so make sure you don't have a circle. It's a little more pressed down on the top and bottom, just a little bit. Okay. I'm making the eye sockets here. I'm just using my pressing tool and literally just going press, 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 press on each side. Leave a little area in between the two eyes. And that's it, you got her eye sockets. I'm using the skinny part of the tool and I'm just kind of pressing in toward the center to make her nose. She has a tiny little peanut nose. It's just literally like a tiny little bump. So yeah, once you get a bump, you got it. <laughs> so make sure it's a tiny little bump and then stick it on her giraffe-like neck. At this point, I put her aside and let her head kind of solidify once you add the hair the hair adds a lot of weight and if your head and neck aren't good and solid it's going to pull it back so she's kind of looking skyward the shoes literally two little beads maybe like tic tac size of black gum paste and then press it into it into the bottom of her legs in the middle with your tool to kind of make it into like a heel and toe and that's it the eye you saw me add a little water seriously like a little dot of white and then use your tool and press it and spread it out you don't want the eyes to bulge because it would look ridiculous, basically. So you're only using a little bit of white and spreading it out and just spread, spread, spread and keep working it out. Her eyes, um, they're not your like typical Disney teardrop shape. They're, they're rounded, but then they kind of go up on the outside slightly. So, you know, look up a picture of her and take a look at the eyes. You'll see what I mean about the shape of them. And no, don't stop. Keep going. There we go. Tuck it up. And look at those terrible wrinkles I put in there. And you just smooth it out like I did. And that's all you do. These are going to be her eyelids. They, I mixed the same color, um, bluish, whatever gray that her body is, with a little bit of regular dark blue to give it a slightly darker tone, but still not really bright. And you just roll out a thin little piece and then press it across the top of her eye. Her eyelids don't droop or anything like that. They just go straight across her eyeball. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just trying to level it out and make it look pretty flat. And I did right there as I looked at it and I realized that top piece had to come down. So 
their dress you can see oh I added some dots and stripes there and there are her eyelids yeah I forgot to mention that one dress has some dots all right this is letting everything dry some more but I'm using the blue marker to do her stitches just start drawing stitches on there are a few important ones that I always make sure she has the one around each wrist she has the ones on her upper arms. She has a couple of random ones on her legs. And then the important ones, you also got to pay attention to are the ones on her chest and on her neck and face. I guess they're all important. We'll just say they're all important. Okay, she's got this one line that goes straight up her chest, almost to her neck. And then she has the V that kind of branches out. Remember I mentioned like cleavage kind of stitches? That's what I was talking about right there. That one that goes up and then the two that go to the side. She has the almost choking choker collar kind of style of stitches to put her, her head on her neck. That's what I'm drawing right here. You want to put this on. Trust me from experience. You want to put this on before you add the hair because otherwise you try to do it with the hair and then you get blue all over the hair and then you get mad. And then it's like midnight and you still have to finish this thing. So learn from me, people. Okay, there we go. So you saw it. And now we're going to add to her head. She has one going toward her right eye and kind of like through it and out over her cheekbone. So that's what I'm doing here. It kind of goes across her forehead and then through her eye. You don't actually draw through her eye. Don't do that. It goes behind her eye and then out the other side, as you can see there. Okay. All right. There's more on her face, but we're going to come back to that later. This is black. She has seriously just like two little black dots for her iris and her pupil. So thank you, uh, Tim, once again, on how easy her eyes are to make. Look at that. She really looks like Sally now. Okay. Now I'm going to add her mouth. I just jump all around here. So keep up, people, if you dare. I'm using the same color gum paste to make her mouth as I will do for her hair. I use copper if you're looking for an actual color. But her mouth is, again, very thin, very, very, you know, pointy. It's not lush and thick or anything like that. And then from each corner of her mouth, she has a line with stitches coming out. Think of like the Joker from Batman. That kind of, a, that kind of an idea, like someone just sliced her cheeks to make her super happy and then stitched it back up. So there we go. Now I'm going to add her eyelashes. Her eyelashes basically are like the letter V of black stitches sewn onto her eyelids. So that's all I'm doing here. I do four for each eyelid. So there you go. She's so cute. Anyway, now comes her hair. I mentioned that I let her head, you know, kind of sit for a few hours. I don't think I let it sit overnight. I think it was a few hours. And now my fingers are brown because I had to mix that copper color. Anyway, so you roll it out nice and thin, but not too thin. This one has to have some staying power too. Kind of leave it domed at the top. Don't make it too rounded off because it does have to go over her head. And you just kind of fold it over, drape it down, kind of like you're making your own little Madonna there with the, with the drape on her head. And that's just to get the measurement of it. The dress and her hair are actually about the same length in the movie. But um, for this, I'm making it just kind of come down to the edge of her dress. I'm not making it really go down further so it doesn't bend out too much. And her hair, even though it's you can see all the wrinkles in it and everything, like it doesn't want to sit properly, we'll fix it. So don't worry. Okay, this is just, again, getting the feel of how it sits across her head and the length of it. And as I said before, the hair covers the back so you don't have to worry about that mess back there. Thank you, hair. All right. Once you get the hair the length you like and it'll sit the way you like, start making lines in it. Don't make it go all the way through. People just make the impressions. Make some big lines. Chop, 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 chop for little lines. And then on each end, I like to cut actually through it uh, a sliver just because her hair is very, I want to say stringy if that's the right word, but it's very, I don't know, flat. <laughs> It's very much like gum paste, actually, in the movie. So now we're going to excuse me, attach it with some water. I put the water on her head and down the back because it's heavy, like I said before, and she's got a little tiny head on a little stick neck. So we want it to stick to her body to give it support. Okay, so that's what I'm doing there. Pressing it in place. Press, press, press. 
and I'm going to, before I press it too much further down, what I should have done, what you guys hopefully will do is just when you're doing those chop, 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 chops, flip it over and do the other side because our hair shows through, you can see. So you wanna see the lines on the other side, the inside behind her neck and everything as well. Once you get, you're get you happy with that, use the back of your knife so you don't cut through too much and make a part. She's got a pretty heavy, solid part in her hair. Using the sharper side, I'm just making some more lines to show her hair coming down because she just pretty much has plain straight down hair parted in the center. So nice, easy hairstyle that's very <laughs> friendly to make. So once again, and like I said before, you don't want it to be too thick because right now on the top of her head, where you know, on the forehead where you would be seeing, it would be really thick and sitting up high and it just doesn't look right because her hair is, is rather thin and kind of lank in the movie. So don't go crazy with it. Just make sure you get your lines in there. That's all you need. Okay. And once you have your lines in, you just pull down around the sides of the hairs to shape it to the head. And don't worry about the rest of the little, the wrinkles and everything. It kind of just suits how it flows. This is what I told you before about the stitches we're going to draw on later and how much easier it is if they line, if the two layers line up with each other. See how easy the first one is. And you can see right here on the yellow, it's not lining up as well. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, people. So do your best to line up those layers properly. I do this on every single scrap of cloth there. I do it across your shoulders, across the bottom, all around the brown patches, everything. And there you go. You didn't have to see all that stitch included. Hopefully you liked it. Check out my other Nightmare Before Christmas videos. And thank you very much. Bye.